likes the mic. And I would like to introduce Tony to you guys. Um, Tony, thank you very much as well for you to, that, that you are here today. And um, he's going to get our brain cells active and, and motivate us. Thanks. Good morning. I think I've got a facility for this kind of good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have a book on surviving the financial meltdown. Who would like it? Sure. Tough times are coming. Who, who wants it? I want two.
I made a decision when I was 24 to write my book. I didn't do anything in it for 35 years. I made a decision to do my CDs about 20 years ago. I didn't do anything for 20 years. Talk is cheap. Three birds sitting on a fence. One decides to fly away. How many are left? Three. Three. Decision doesn't equal action. Who's ever taken a decision and not acted? Action is what matters. If your, if your potential is going to come about, you need action to make stuff happen. And by the way, you should have should listen to me because I'm a billionaire. I'm a cash billionaire. Why are you laughing? When you meet a billionaire, when you meet Bill Gates, you say, is it dollars or pesos or... That's, I'm a billionaire. So I can share some wisdom with you. So here's my challenge. What's going to happen to go to your next level? Really? Times are tough. They're getting tougher. There are 1 billion people in Africa. By 2055, there will be 2 billion. Think about that. Constraints are there. Resources are, are issues. Competition is growing. If you're going to be successful, you have to up your game. Which means you've got to go to places that you've never been before. You've got to get out of the comfort zone. Because the comfort zone is the death zone. I hate ties. I hate suits. But sometimes you get stuck in them. And then we get stuck because it's safe. Anybody ever be nervous to go and approach somebody? I was in primary, in, in primary school in, in uh, Blegari, and then I went to Bryanston High. It's a distance. And I met some friends down the road, and her name was Glynis Kilpatrick. And I used to drive from, right from my house on my bicycle to their house and get in their car, and then we went to school. So it was kind of a two, one third from bicycle, two thirds drive. And I used to sit in the back with her brother, and she sat in front with her mom. And I fell in love with her little young guy, but I was nervous, I was shy, and I didn't do anything. And every day in the morning I used to sit in the back like huddling and looking and thinking and wishing. But you know what? She never did a thing. She never came and said, hi, I smoke you. Oh. <laughs> hey? I was too scared to. I was in my comfort zone. I was scared of her saying, no. And if you, some of you are much too young, but we used to have discos in the garage. Yeah. And so the boys sat on the one side, and the women on the back side. Remember that? And so now you're sitting, waiting, and hoping. And she was sitting there with the, the young girls. And I was, I was just too scared because, you know, it's this, this walk of horror. What happens if you get here, and you ask for the dance, and she says, no. It's humiliation, now you're the humiliation walking around. Like, oh. And so fear controlled me. And I never ever took that step. I became a professional DJ, I was involved in lots of parties, I became a hooligan, paraglided, and I grew up. And when I was about 30 something, I was coming home from a party one night, and I needed to wind down, it was about 11 o'clock. And I needed to just wind down and I stopped at this little place in the middle of Ferndale. And guess who's at the bar? Mm -hmm. Linus. <laughs> <laughs> but now I've grown up. <coughs> and so I went and had a chat, we had a few drinks, and I was brave enough, I said, you know, when we were at school and I was young, I said, I had such a crush on you. I was just too shy. She said, I had a crush on you too, but I just oh. wished oh. something. <laughs> And so, you've got to take the chance. We all get, nobody gets out of this game alive. Take the chance. If somebody says no to you, it's not a loss for you, it's a loss for them. So what's going to happen for you to jump today? So let's get your brain good. Nine dots. How do you join all those nine dots? If you've got a pen, you can try and play quickly. How do you join those nine dots? <laughs> I worked with a guy that started Brazilians, Professor Stoltz. You, you need an IQ to get on the field. IQ is your kind of your mental acuity. The reality is you're born at a level and you can grow it by 10, 20%. But that's where you come in at. That's, that's a given. EQ is vital. You get, you get the job for IQ, you'll lose it for lack of EQ, lack of emotional intelligence, lack of the ability to manage people and connect and build relationships. 
Now, all the big business boys that get fired is not for their IQ, it's for their lack of EQ, their ability to manage and move people and move energy. But if you've got a good IQ and a good EQ, but you get slapped and you stay down, who cares? And I watched Rocky Balboa fall. I mean, I don't understand how he keeps on getting back up. But you have to keep on getting back up. The number one skill in the world today is resilience. For you, for your kids, for your family, for your teams. I don't care what other skills you got, you can be the best in the world if you take a hit. Who's, who's in tough times in business? Anybody here? Tough times, challenging times? Tough times need tough minds. I used to be top of Google, I used to get five inquiries per day. 20,012, 24th of April, they turned off the tap and I was in free form for five years. 20 inquiries in five years. Tough. You learn in, the, in those tough times. And so I've come to understand that all success is inner. It's mindset, it's attitude, it's identity, it's how you speak to yourself. It's the inner game. The external part is minor. And so even if the economy is bad, there are people that are still selling well, hard, having a good time. The average Joe is going to suffer. I like tough times because I have a tough mind. When it's easy times, anybody's out there. Anybody here in the state agent? When the market's great, every granny and her cousin and her aunt become estate agents. When the market's tight, then the professionals survive and thrive. It's the same in any kind of business. So I, I didn't tell you this, but I, I've seen your future. I've time traveled, and I've seen your future. And you think I'm joking. <laughs> Here's it. If you do what you've been doing, the way you're going, think about this right now. Who's got more months left at the end of the money? <laughs> In my coaching, most people I work with, less than two months, and then fresh out of cash. Think about it. Average person, less than. Average person is monthly, more, more monthly at the end of the month. So here's the reality, by the time you're 65, 49% of people are going to be eating dog food. Both my parents died, 62 and 66, the last three years of their life, I funded their life. With my two brothers. And those are the easy days. 29% won't make the line, probably with AIDS and rape and murder and mayhem and stuff, it might be a little higher. Imagine, what's the oldest person you know today? Call out an age? 90. 96. 96? How much? 102. 102. Here's, we've got life extending beer and vitamins and medical science, we're going to live long. Here's a very serious question. How are you going to fund from 60 to 100? I'm serious. Wake the frog up. You can't be same old, same old. Because I promise you, same old, same old is dog food guaranteed. When I was a boy scout, we used to take real food to the aunties and the grannies in Hillbrow. They used to stay, the old ladies used to stay in Hillbrow. They used to have half a ton of cat food for breakfast, half a ton of cat food for dinner. Because that's all they could afford. Wake the frog up. You cannot be doing the same old stuff that you always do. 7% will be okay with your family and yourself will be okay. And 3% will be financially free. Anybody here financially free? You're bulletproof? This isn't theory. This is reality of what people do. Many of us talk. I need to lose 20 kilos. I talk about it every day. Do I do it? No. And that's why coaching is such a powerful process is where are you now, where do you want to be, and I will hold you to the fire until you get there. Most of us know what to do. We don't do what we know because we don't feel like it. Break up and it's too late. If you take a frog and put it into hot water and put it into cold water, you can slowly heat the water and eventually it'll die, it'll boil because it's reasonable, it's accommodating. No, I'll be fine, I'll be okay, I'll make a plan, I'll adjust, I'm cool. If you took that frog and threw it into boiling water, it would jump out. You are the same. Because you're accommodating, you're adjusting. Now I'm paying the rent, I'm kind of surviving. You cannot survive. 
People are in ugly relationships because they're there for the money, for the safety or whatever it is. People are in ugly jobs. Life is short. And the reality is you weren't put on the, on the planet just to survive. You have the potential. You have the potential to transform the world. Are you? And if not, why not? Starting with yourself. You've got the potential. When are you going to start that engine? When I was, I'm part of a group called Mankind Project. We do healing work for men. And on the workshop, they talk about this Indian brave. He's living in Texas. And he's got his teepee and his beautiful white horse. And every Sunday, he goes into town to buy his groceries and comes back. One day, they find oil on his farm. He becomes a billionaire. And he's got these huge TV dishes and his mansion. And he buys a new V12 double turbo 2,500 horsepower Ferrari deluxe monster machine. And there he is the next Sunday going into town on his horse, putting the Ferrari behind him. Why are you laughing? You're the same. You see, all you have to do is get off the horse into the Ferrari and turn the key. He had 2,500 horsepower. He has fiddling around with one horsepower. You're the same. When will you start to hold yourself? push through. What's blocking you from that? See, we can motivate you with, with stuff. <laughs> and I promise you, that will activate your potential. But do you, do you want to be shoved and motivated like that? Motivation of what your boss does to you to make more sales. It's manipulation. It doesn't last. Inspiration comes from within. Inspirari, the breath of God. So what inspires you? What's inspiring in your workplace, in your job? Because I'm a boy scout, and if you're going to make a fire, we can get sparks anyway. You can buy sparks. You can, you can get them by mistake when, when you're around people. But what's the most important, in this picture, what's the most important thing for success? Beliefs. If that's not right, your mindset, your attitude, your beliefs, your values, your behavior, if that's not right, and you've got that kind of mindset, you're going nowhere. You're not going to start a fire in a month of Sundays, in a year of Sundays. But if that's right, you're open, amenable, positive, yes. resilient. Who's a positive thinker here? Positive thinking is a waste of time. <laughs> in the army, they caught these military guards, and they were prisoner of war in, in Japan or China somewhere. But they were positive. And every day they'd wake up and say, today they're coming to get us. Positive thinking. Stay positive. And there was a captain there and he said, I don't care when they come. I will be here. And the next day the positive guy said, today is the day they're coming. And they didn't. <laughs> he said, whenever they come, I will be here. Three years later, the positive people were gone. They gave up. Positive thinking only lasts as long as you have willpower to stay positive. He was resilient enough and he managed his mindset that when they eventually came, he was there. And so positive thinking and resilience is vital. Because negativity and resilience is a pain, you don't want them near you. And everybody brings happiness, some by coming into the room, some by leaving the room. <laughs> Which one are you? Which one are you? And so once you've got that fire going, you can start to kindle it and protect it and defend it. So be around positive people. Avoid the negatives, the victims, the, the, the vampires. You know, you, you're with some people. And when you walk away, it's like, oh my God. It's like, they suck your energy. <laughs> Choose the people in your teams, in your business, in your friendships, in your relationship. Because then you can start to build like that. And once you've got that fire going, you can then build a furnace and you'll be unstoppable. I know guys that are making buckets of money. I know people that have got time freedom, money freedom, and relationship. Because you can have lots of time and lots of money and no love. That's hell. I know people who have got lots of time, but the robots have got no money. I know about the love part. I know people who have got lots of money and no time. But having those without love and connection and relationship, so, don't, 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 don't. and so this is your brain. We've got brain scans now. We can actually 
see the neural pathways in your brain. We are amazing machines. You are an incredible machine. When are you going to use it? What version of software are you running? 1.0 Windows, remember? <laughs> your identity and who you, who you are and how you think. But, but at the end of the day, who's going to do it for you? You know, the web gives you everything free. I have a screen for work and a screen for learn, and I do about 150 gigs a month just on YouTube. I heard a guy delivered a baby via YouTube. His wife was having a baby, and he learned just in time information, and he delivered the baby. Think about this. We all, we all, most of us have insurance. Work out your total monthly insurance, house, life, medical, car, get a number, a vague number. I'm going to, going to take a figure of five. Double your number, so whatever your number is, double it, so now my number is ten. Add two noughts onto the end of your number, so now my number is a million. That's how much you're going to spend on insurance, protecting your goals, and the possibility that something might happen. Can you win the soccer game protecting your girls only? At the end of 10 years, what will you have in your hand of when your million rent spent on insurance? Nothing. Are you investing in equal or better amount investing in you to ensure success? Anybody here investing in equal or better amount? I get a 10 to 20 times return on whatever I invest in me. I put millions into me. How much are you putting into you, putting into your staff? Best investment you can make is when you get divorced, they can't take it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <you. laughs> so let's refresh your thinking. How many squares? Go. Three. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Show me that this is my most powerful entrepreneurial test. So get a picture in your head. What would it look like if you're at your full potential? Just get a quick picture. What would that look like if you're being awesome? Absolutely. Making the money, having the fun, having the love, doing the business, laughing. Feeling and love, a balance, peace, joy, meaning in your life business in your team. Easy that you can breathe. Often we're very tense. Easy. What would that look like for you? What's going to happen for you to go there? Because until you get yourself sorted out, you're never going to get your business to go where you need to go. Anybody got written goals that they look at weekly? seems that you don't mind where you're going to get to, eh? Hey? But without action, without fiercely focused, swift action along a plan to a predestined destination, you're going to arrive anywhere. You may not be happy when you arrive there. Tough. You need to change your identity. Without your, people were talking about, we had sales trainers in, and we had people training us and that. Until you change your identity, nothing will change. Know this. It's not stuff you read in a book. It's an experiential action learning process. Who am I? Am I a spiritual being having a physical experience? Am I a physical being having a spiritual experience? What am I on the planet for? Am I just a stuck, stuck place that, that drinks and, and does stuff? Or am I a piece of the most powerful force in the universe? It's here to bring love. But until you change the identity, your old baggage is going to drive you. Mindset, we now know from research, mindset is the number one thing that business needs. The right mindset makes you up to seven times more valuable to your business, to yourself. Do you ever go for mindset training? What are the top 20 mindset qualities that you want in your staff and you need in your team to, su to, to survive and succeed? When you go for a job interview, they check, have you got the skills that you've done this? Yes, you've got the skills. How do they check that you've got the right mindset? How do you check that you've got the right mindset? 
And the secret is hire for attitude, train for skill. It's very, very dangerous to have a highly skilled, bad attitude pick. And that's what happens. Billions are spent on hiring the wrong people because they look great on paper. When they come into the team, they smash your culture. Tony Shea from Zappos, number one, do you have the skill set? Number two, do you have the mindset? Number three, do you fit the team? You get three. If you don't have the mindset and the fit to a team, we don't care. You can be the best in the world, you're not coming into our team. So important. How good is your word? Anybody here not lied in the last 90 days? <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. This is a problem in Africa. Okay, I'm going to get brutal here. We're, we're a country and a nation of liars. Do you like to be around liars? Do you trust liars? So my challenge for you is how good is your word? That's the problem. You know, and we, we make a promise and we break it, we make a promise and we break it. And it's like, if you just nick yourself with a razor blade, you'll die today. But in a thousand times, you will. It's what I call fractional suicide. Is we've lost our credibility. Because you, I, you, you, you lie to me, I lie to you, we don't have credibility, we don't have trust, we don't have connection. And so we just, we dance facade to facade, mask to mask. Think about how good is your word. Do you have baggage? We all have baggage, but have you unhooked your baggage? I mean, people that come with their bloody pantechnicans. Oh! I love this, I hope this, I hope this thing. Charlie Chaplin. You know Charlie Chaplin? He never spoke a word, but he did speak. And he told a joke, and everybody laughed. And so he told the same joke again, and fewer people laughed. And he told the same joke again, and even no one laughed. He says, why aren't you laughing? And they said, well, you've told the same joke three times. You've heard it already. He says, I'm confused. If that's how you work for the joke, why do you keep on crying about your baggage in your past that you've gone through over and over and over? When are you going to drop that? And I thought, hmm. So that's my question to you. When are you going to drop it? You can either use it as a poor me, or you can use it as try me. What you've been through either becomes a fuel for greatness or for a fire that you'll burn yourself down and, oh, Shad, have you seen what I've gone through? <laughs> and we've all gone through. But are you going to go home with your baggage or are you going to leave it here today? What is your stake? If people know what to do, they don't do what they know because we don't feel like it. What you focus on, you get more of. The problem is we focus on the negative. The brain's programmed to focus on the negative. Three times negative, the brain runs. The amygdala's process is, watch out for the saber-toothed tiger. The honor, but the boss could be one. <laughs> but what you focus on, you get more of. What you focus on, you will attract more into your life. What are your priorities? What do you focus on? What are you spending your time? People say, these are my values. I don't listen to them, I watch what they do. Mm -hmm. My value is health. You're yeah, right, that's why you need to lose 20 kilos. <laughs> it's not what you say, it's what you do. You want to see what your values are? Look at where you are in your life. You might say I value money, or I value saving, or I value whatever it is. You are exactly where you deserve to be based on the beliefs, behaviors, and values you've got. If you want to get something different, make a change. Focus. I'm, I'm like an epileptic tarantula on a hot tin roof. If you go to my home now, my two screens, I've got 70 windows open. I swear, I probably waste an hour a day going, ding, 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 wrong, wrong, no, 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 no. Which are oh, there's the window. Focus, absolute. I've got a sand timer that I use now. It's a 20 minute timer. Just focus 20 minutes on something. Irrevocable, one step closer to your goal every day. Can you eat an elephant? Yes. How? So even if your goal is, is as big as an elephant, just one bite at a time, every day, irrevocably, every single day. And then action, 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 action. Nothing matters without action. If I take an action with Glynis, who knows, I might be married to her. But action is the most important thing. These are the things that drive humanity, and they drive your clients and your staff. Love and connection, certainty, uncertainty. These are the ego, the bottom four, the ego, the top are your soul. This is what drives everybody every day, why they come to work, why they do what they do. 
how do you use it to drive yourself, to, to, to make sure that you get better business with the clients? Because here is the business component of my process. Times are tough, and I promise you they're getting tougher. Anybody ever heard of Zemot, Zero Moment of Truth? Do you know that clients are making decisions about your product or service, up to 80% of the decision is made before they even talk to you. So if you're in a business of trying to sell, and you don't even get to talk to the client, how do you sell? Because the digital world has completely transformed the way that the game gets played. Now, on a little cell phone, you've got access to reviews, social media, um, Hello Peter, all of these things. I was about to buy some speakers, I went online, I checked, I was in the, I'm a PC dealer, I was in the PC dealer shop. I said, let me just quickly check. Chink, 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 ooh, no, thank you, bye. In 2010, people used five points of contact to make decisions. 2011 that was a 10. Today they're probably using 15. I do not buy a thing without going online. And so whereas the, the first moment of truth was when the person was there at the shelf looking to buy, today maybe the stimulus for whatever your client is is an event. They are going online and they're checking you out and finding possibilities and alternatives. Often they know more about you when they arrive there than you. It's a very big change. And most people are using old marketing approaches, old attitudes, old mindsets for a very new world. The kids today are into a phone first, the, the new generation. It's, and some of us older, older buddies, we were talking earlier. Um, we still have kind of an old mindset, but I'm a techie. My, my girlfriend at the time wanted techies. We went and we tried them. They did the run test. And it was 1495 uh, Hold on. Give me a price? He says, no. I wanted a better price. I said to my fiance, let's go outside in the car. I found it for 895 in Pretoria and 995 in Cape Town. We were in Cape Town. I went to the Cape Town guy and I said, listen, I can get them for 895 in Pretoria. Will you do a deal for us? We'll buy a lot of other stuff. We spent two grand. But we got it for 895 same thing. If you're selling the same thing, how do you differentiate yourself? You can't be the same thing, same thing. Because that decision-making process is completely different now. And unless you're in front of that person, you have no influence and no impact. I was at Mr. Hills. I was, they, they put me, on Tuesday I was stand up bank, I did a team building and a, a talk for them. It's probably, they've got five days there. But they put us into a venue, into the ex, the the exhibition center, the acoustics were disgusting. If, I, if my average team building is 50, 60 grand, that I take a client there, 10. 10 is half a million bucks. So, so who is number one, who is the client? Because very often I'm influencing where the client goes. I'm just a team building company and a speaker. But they'll phone me and say, hey, where do you think we should go? I go where I get good service, good value. And I have a connection, the relationship. So people are doing huge research ahead of time. And you, unless you're in that pot, you're invisible. I used to do page one, position one on Google for 220 phrases of team building. No, page one, position one. You know what that is? Five to seven leads per day. 24th of April, 2012, Google changed how they rank. Invisible. They dropped me 700 spots. You couldn't even find me. So literally 20 leads in five years. But I got stuck in the old trying, hoping, trying to get my ranking. Do you know what that cost me? Huge. So who's influencing and what's influencing? You go online, you look at a venue, you get a price, but then you read on one of these review view sites. Bad. Two stars. You don't even have a chance to explain it was a bad day or that staff member's gone. But the shower was leaking and I didn't like it, so I write some yucky stuff about you. It could cost you 1500 grand. 
And so a lot of influences that are going to impact your business, you don't even have control over them. You can, like updating your staff, getting the right stuff to happen within your business, so that when you do have good clients, that that good word spreads. And that's the power. It's a sword. You can either use it for good or use it for bad. But you have to, you've got to find a way to win more. You can't do the same old, same old. This is research in the motor industry. But I promise you, it equates across the other industries. In that age group, the, in the youth age group, 91% of the influence is from pre-event, pre-research. Not even from the first moment of truth or the second moment of truth. Before you even have a chance to say, let me. They've made a decision, they've got an impression. It's only going to get harder. And so they've discovered that it takes 12 positive experiences to outweigh one negative one in an invent experience with a customer. Think about that. 12. Before a person will get back to zero, back to neutral, and trust, and connect, and, and reward, and verbally recommend you out again. So what do your staff like? Because I mean, we were talking earlier, one guy says, you know, my, my boss is greedy. If you work for a greedy boss, do you feel like you want to go and make them more money? If you feel, you feel you're being underpaid, overworked, and it's just for money? Do you, are you going to bring your best to work? And so many times when I go and do research into companies, they're so demotivated. There's politics, there's racism, there's unhappiness, there's conflict. And it's because of one person, maybe a leader or a manager. People join a company for the vision, mission and values. They leave for the upline relationship with the manager. Number one reason that they leave or are disengaged. And like we said, some people bring happiness. Other people, you know, by leaving, some by going. What do you like as a manager? Do you bring out the best in your people? Do you bring out the best in yourself? Because if you get it to go the other way, that, that good word expands. Social media today allows you to tell a thousand people. And the problem is, you can't even get in the middle and say, oops, I'm sorry. When the avalanche starts, you can't stop it. So your staff need to be up to speed. Your staff, one, one comment from your staff member can, can smash. I was looking to buy a conference center in Midrand. I went online, I checked all the reviews. And I just said, it's going to cost too much money to rebuild that debt credibility into the market. It's not worth it, even at that bargain price. So credibility, trust are such an important thing. So how good is your web presence? Is it professional? Is it sharp? Does it work on mobile? Do you have squeeze pages where you give value and get information beyond just a brochure? Today the technology is changing. You've got to be up to speed with what's happening. If you're not, not mobile ready, Google's going to penalize you for your ranking. Facebook advertising today is so cheap for five. For five dollars you can get to boost your post in front of a thousand people and exactly, I can say I want people that are left-handed, live in Randburg and work here. And I can put myself in front of them. You can't even do that on the phone. I had, one, I had a black lady that I'm mentoring. I put her on the phone for three months. It probably cost me about eight or nine thousand rand in phone calls. Yeah, I've got some business. Spent 400 rand on Facebook. Got a hundred thousand rand of the business. Do you know how to use the new tools? And when you get the class coming to you, are your staff shocked? Are they making sure that the touch points are effective? Somebody was saying, also, you can get all these reviews, and one will knock you back down. And you know what? You might have a beautiful white wall and one black spot. What do you look at? The black spot. And so that you've got to constantly manage your presence on the web. We are socially hardwired. How do you bring that into your business? But I can tell you that you number one have to step up yourself, number two you've got to step up your staff, number three you're then going to step up your business. What are you offering? What are your, what are your value propositions? You've got, to re, you've got to rethink and revitalize and rejuvenate the entire framework, starting with you. Ugly, unhappy, twitchy, bitchy bosses. It goes down. Happiness goes up three levels. 
in the ripples in a pond. What does staff say about you? Do you have people knocking a door out to come and work for your business? Or, I saw research, 68% of people are looking for new jobs. How many of your staff? Some of you want to stay, but typically the bad ones stay and the good ones go because they've got better options. So what's it like in your space? So I have a whole framework that I put together over 40 years, which is a high performance framework that's academically validated. We help people to double and quadruple their performance. People's teams, leadership and culture. Your culture and your leadership are at least 50% of the results and the impact that you have in your life, in your business. Most people don't understand how to change culture. They get there and that's what it is. They don't understand the importance of leadership versus management. They don't understand that as an example, they, the leader of a business impacts hugely on the morale and the, the effort that people put into the business. So I have five CDs on this framework if you're in a business environment and you want to double your business sales. I help the government department with a weekend workshop go from 200 million to 800 million. Oxbow Conference Center and their packaging company, we took them from 30 to 50, we're going to 200 million. It starts with people, it starts with you. We're at the beginning of the year, it's tough times. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Unfortunately, this song, this, the volume of the song is not, not loud enough to dance really, really big, but maybe we can still do it. Please give a person on each side of you a positive compliment. On the left, give them a positive compliment. On the right, give them a positive compliment. Turn to the person on your left, give them a positive compliment. Turn to the person on your right, give them a positive compliment.